Mike Henley is counting some of the zoo's newest and tiniest residents, baby Elkhorn coral. I look through the microscope and I just rotate the tiles around until I find an alive or a dead coral. All right, here we go. Another live one. He's working as part of an international effort to help the endangered species by growing new coral to boost its genetic diversity. At intervals of one month, two months, three months, six and 11 months, we actually count individually how many corals settled out onto these tiles. Today is the, is the two month count. In August, Henley and other scientists involved in CCOR, short for sexual coral reproduction, went to Puerto Rico to collect and artificially inseminate the microscopic Elkhorn coral larva. Capturing the spawning coral gametes, essentially egg and sperm bundles, is tricky, but at least it's fairly predictable. The coral usually spawns somewhere between 9.15 and 10 p.m. Uh, every night for three, three consecutive nights on the same days of the year. On the two-man dive teams, one holds the light while the other uses what looks like a butterfly net attached to a water bottle. We just make more or less figure eights through the water trying to catch as many, many um, uh, gametes as we can. Once the bottle's full, it's transferred back to a lab on the beach for research and artificial insemination. So then you have a fertilized egg, uh, becomes, then becomes a larvae. Um, after a, f a few days of uh, floating around, sort of in a planktonic phase, the um, larvae will develop little cilia, little hairs around the, around the, uh, around the basically bundle of cells. And at that time, it'll start to swim down and it'll start to look for an attachment point. Here at the zoo, that attachment point is in the grooves of these ceramic tiles. And then they actually metamorphosed from a larvae into uh, one primary polyp. It's about a millimeter um, in diameter. About 12,000 larvae were brought back to the National Zoo, where a 90-gallon saltwater tank became their new home. The tank features high wattage lights and a device that mimics the movement of the surf in the coral's native Caribbean habitat. Worldwide, coral is dying at an alarming rate and has been for years, mostly from increasing ocean temperatures. In the Caribbean, Elkhorn coral stands, which serve as reef builders, are down about 90% in the last 30 years. But the coral is notoriously difficult to grow in the lab. Of the 12,000 larvae brought back to the zoo, only 158 settled onto the tiles and formed the tiny polyps, a mere hint of the 10-foot wide behemoths they could eventually grow into. I've never seen Elkhorn coral the size, the size that it can and should attain until I went to Puerto Rico back in August and it's truly, I mean if coral reefs are the rainforests of the seas, the corals are the trees and these corals in particular grow as big as trees. I mean they are huge. The zoo plans to study these animals with the hope of releasing some of them back to their native habitat. In the meantime, Henley will keep counting. So two so far and I said that if I have one at the end of one year I'll, I'll be happy. <laughs> All I need is one. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas.